Okay, here is a review of the cumulative test we took on October 10th. Um, the thing is that there were 62 points you could earn on the test, and then I added five for a bonus, and so that's why you will see it on Progress Book as 67 points total. So for the first question, all you needed to do was to convert the mathematical expression into sentences. And so this first one is the initial position is three meters, um, so no symbols. Um, this one was worth two points. I gave a point for initial position and a point for three meters. Um, the second one is this equation is the final velocity is seven kilometers per hour. Again, one point for final velocity, one point seven kilometers per hour. And then the last one, the displacement is 41 centimeters. Um, one point for displacement, one point for 41 centimeters. Next, you had to do uh, symbols and standard units. So acceleration, the symbol is A. The um, units are meters per second. I also accepted meters per second squared. Velocity is V. Um, symbol for that is meters per second. And then position is X. Um, people also had Y for Y position, which would be totally acceptable as well. And then standard unit is meters. Okay, for the next one, um, an object has a velocity of 34 meters per second. So this vector is 34, represents 34 meters per second. And you were supposed to draw the components of the velocity. And so all I wanted you to do was to make a right triangle. Um, so one component that way, one component that way. Some of you drew the components up here, and that was perfectly fine, as long as you had components at right angles. So you draw the components with arrows, because um, components are directed line segments, and that got you two points. Um, the next thing you needed to do was to determine the x and y components of the velocity. There were two ways to do this. Um, way one is you could count the squares, so it was 15 squares this way, eight squares that way. Use Pythagorean theorem to find out that the hypotenuse um, would be 17 squares. I told you that that is equivalent to 34 meters per second squared, and that basically means all of the values for doubled. So 15 squares is 30 meters per second, or 8 squares is 16 meters per second. So that was one way to do it. Another way to do it was to measure this angle is 64 degrees, and so that method is over here. Angle is 64 degrees. Um, to calculate the x velocity, that would be this one right here, which is cosine, so 35 meters per second times cosine of 64 is 60, 16 meters per second. Oh, apparently I left off the seconds. Let's fix that. Um, and then the vy, which is this one, is 34 meters per second times the sine of 64 is 30 meters per second, so Sokotoa. Either one works. The um, next one was the components of position are shown to the left. Draw the position as a directed line segment. So I've got, this is my Y component, this is my X component. You needed to draw starting at the tail of the first to the tip of the second. And so you had to have both the line and the arrow. Um, and then assuming the grid is one centimeter square, determine the magnitude, that means the length or size and direction of the directed line segment. So um, I counted and I got 20 centimeters for the X, 21 centimeters for the Y, so I used Pythagorean theorem to get 29 centimeters. And then um, you can either use trig. I actually just used my protractor and I got this was 44 degrees, I believe. Yep, 44 degrees. Um, so the um, you had two points if you had an arrow, so the line and the arrowhead, and then two points for getting 29 centimeters and this angle. Okay, the next part, um, these had multiple answers, um, and so I've only given you an example, or you know, one example. Draw a graph that shows an increasing negative slope. Um, 
This is an increasing negative slope. The only thing that you could change about this one is where you drew it, because there's only one thing that has an increasing negative slope. Um, I gave one point for increasing negative slope. For the other three, 10, 11, and 12, um, each one was worth three points, two points for the graph labels, and one point for the actual graph. Now, as I said, there were multiple answers. Um, so draw a graph that shows positive displacement. One thing you could do is velocity and time with constant velocity above um, the time axis. I've got positive velocity, so I've got a positive displacement. Um, number 11, draw a graph that shows accelerated motion. Accelerated motion is just changing velocity. Um, some people had just drew an acceleration versus time graph with an accelerated line. That worked. Um, for the velocity graph, if you did that, you just needed to show um, a slanted line or just a line that was not horizontal. Um, again, people had various things that were correct. And then drawing a graph that shows an object that's turning around. Um, several of you tried to bluff your way through this by drawing uh, crazy graphs, and I mostly did not accept those. Um, but for a position versus time, you need to show either a hill or a valley, because that shows turning around. Okay, next part, describe the motion. So I was looking for, many, many people described the graph instead of the motion. So this is constant positive velocity, one point for each one of those. Um, this one was two parts, so you actually needed two different descriptions for this first part constant positive velocity, and then for the second part, um, it was positive velocity, and then you need to either say like decreasing or slowing down, because um, it's going whatever it was. I think some people said to rest, and I accepted that as well. Okay, last page. So a car is initially traveling at seven meters per second and increases the speed steadily. Um, I don't know anything else other than the initial velocity, so that is all I know is the initial velocity. Everything else is, cannot be determined. Three points. Um, generally, anytime I have positive physics questions, it's always one point per um, box. Number 16, a student releases a marble from the top of a 140 centimeter long ramp, so I'm gonna read with a pencil. So I fill in my uh, displacement as 140, oh, centimeters, sorry, I missed that one, centimeters. Um, and the marble increases speed steadily and reaches the bottom of a ramp with a speed of 120 centimeters, so I, again, uh, read with a pencil, 120 centimeters, and we assume it's being released from rest, so that is the other thing I know. So I know three things. Um, determine all unknowns and answer the following question. So the first thing I can do is find the average velocity, and the average velocity is normal way you find a uh, mathematical average. I add the two velocities and divide by two. So that gives me 60 centimeters per second, so that is that one. And then in order to find the time, I'm going to use this equation. Um, I know displacement, I know average velocity, so I divide both sides by average velocity. That gives me that equals time. Um, substitute in my numbers and I get 2.33 seconds. So that's those two. And the last one. And that was 12 blanks, so 12 points. Students' motion is captured using a motion detector displayed on the graph below. Use the graph to answer. So they tell me that right is defined as positive. I notice that all of my velocity values are positive, so that means the direction of travel is right. And then describe the motion. The velocity values are getting smaller, and so that means decreasing speed. Um, what is the distance traveled? So in terms of my graph interpretation, velocity versus time, the distance traveled is the area under a graph. Um, this is not the only way to solve it, but um, I think this is uh, the way I solved it. So to find the area under the graph, I've got a rectangle and base times height. My base is 60 seconds. My height is two uh, meters per second, and so that gives me 120 meters. And then to that, I add the area of the triangle. And so that's 100, or 1 half times my base is 60 seconds. My height is 4 meters per second, because I'm just looking at this height right here. 
and that's 120 meters. I add those together and I get 240 meters, so 240 meters. And then the final speed, all I need to do is read off the graph. And so I read that point here, the final speed. And so that is two meters per second.